Hi everyone and welcome back. So we're going to continue our discussion on simple harmonic motion and we're going to start off by talking about what the conditions are that are required for simple harmonic motion. Uh, I think after having watched the last video it should be pretty evident to you what these conditions are. So condition number one, you are, your oscillation or your vibration has to be about a fixed point. And what you also have is that the acceleration is always going to be directed towards that fixed point. Remember we were saying that the acceleration is the in the opposite direction to the direction of displacement. Well, sim quite simply put, the acceleration is directed towards that fixed point. And that fixed point obviously happens to be the mean position or the equilibrium position. Finally, the magnitude of the acceleration is going to be proportional to the displacement from that fixed point. And you know this because the acceleration is always uh, going to be uh, increasing the farther away you get from that fixed point. And that's why you know, you're know you able to bring something to a stop at a maximum displacement point, and then uh, the pendulum or whatever it is swings back to the mean position that it started off at. So now if we remember the graphs that we made for simple harmonic motion, you could see that they were off the form of a sine graph or a cosine graph. Well, the conditions for simple harmonic motion give us this proportionality equation, which is that acceleration is proportional to negative x, uh, where a is the acceleration and x is the displacement, right? And the minus com sign comes in because the acceleration is in the opposite direction of the displacement. So you need some kind of a proportionality constant to make an equation to happen, right? Out of, uh, out of this, so it has to be negative, some kind of proportionality constant times x. And what we found experimentally is we have the angular frequency omega squared. That is a, a very elegant solution, basically, uh, to that uh, that uh, proportion, proportionality constant. So this is the critical equation. This describes simple harmonic motion. Uh, and the graphs that we came up with on uh, uh, in, in our previous video for uh, the uh, displacement time and the velocity time and the acceleration time uh, graphs, they are quite simply the solutions to this equation. And the precise equations that they represent are as follows. So you don't need to know how this equation was derived precisely, but um, think of it as uh, in, in more of an intuitive sense. So what happens when time t is equal to zero? Well, when time t is equal to zero, this guy right here is gonna be zero, warning, right? So if that happens, then this whole thing at, at t equals zero, x will become zero, right? So this also leads us to an interesting kind of uh, way of looking at it. What about, what happens when x equals x naught, right? So when, uh, when x equals x naught, let's write this out uh, at x equals x naught, Basically, the equation becomes x naught divided by x naught is equal to sine of omega t, or it's equal to one. Now, when does the sine function reach a value of one? It reaches it at 90 degrees or pi by two radians, right? So if I was to do an inverse sine of this, omega t has to be equal to pi by two, right? And what is t equals pi divided by 2 omega? Does this ring a bell? What could this be? This is the time period. Because if you remember, we said that the angular frequency is equal to 2 pi upon t. So if you do a little bit of arithmetic, uh, algebra, excuse me, you will be able to see that at the, at, at the um, once you have reached uh, the, um, time period t, when, when that has occurred, you have hit maximum uh, displacement. So that's a really elegant way of uh, showing like, you know, when you reach uh, x naught, you reach x naught at time equals capital T. Or perhaps a more accurate way of saying this is that your time period t is the amount of time that needs to elapse before you reach maximum displacement. So if the displacement equation is x equals x naught sine of omega t. Well, what is dx by dt? If, if I take the derivative of x with respect to t, 
It's simply v, isn't it? It's v equals dx by dt, which is equal to, well, what is, uh, what's gonna happen here? What's the, what's a constant? x naught is a constant. And inside this function, you have omega t. So omega is gonna have to come out. It becomes omega t, omega out here. And then what, what happens to sine omega t? What's the uh, derivative of uh, sine omega t? Well, it's just gonna be cos omega t. And then similarly, what is acceleration? Acceleration is equal to dv by dt. So if we plot this out, once again, x is gonna have to, x naught is gonna, is a constant, it'll stay out there. This omega is gonna come back out again here, this, so this make it, makes it x omega squared. And then what is the derivative of cosine? It's negative sine, so there's gonna be negative function out there, sine, negative sine omega t. So that basically gets us um, gets us what where we need to go. These are the equations that represent simple harmonic motion. I would also like you to just do one thing for me. Bear with me as I go through this. Let's take a and divide it by x. Acceleration divided by x. What happens right there? We've well, got the equation right there in front of you, right? It's negative x naught omega squared sine omega t divided by x naught sine omega t. So the sine function cancels out, the x naught cancels out, we're just left with negative omega squared, or a is equal to negative omega squared x, which is exactly what we were looking at two minutes ago on the previous slide. So this guy's is how we look at simple harmonic motion as a whole. So if, uh, if you um, now want to try and calculate the vi velocity of a vibrating body, how would you go about uh, doing it? Uh, and I should say velocity of a vibrating body at any point in the acceleration, uh, in the oscillation, how would you calculate that? Well, quite simply, uh, what you would end up using is V equals plus or minus, omega, it's plus or minus because it can be in one direction or the other, right? And you would take x naught squared minus x squared. So whatever, whatever the position is at that time, and whatever the maximum displacement position is, you have to subtract the squares of, uh, from each other, take a square root and multiply it by the angular frequency. And this is going to, this also allows us to say that when uh, your displacement is zero, when this guy is equal to zero, you have the maximum possible uh, velocity at that time. Uh, do not worry about how this equation was derived, uh, I would say if, uh, for the purposes of our studies here, but let's look at an example uh, to show how we can arrive, uh, how we can use this equation. So let's say we have a mass at the end of a spring and it's oscillating, right? It's moving up and down. And the oscillation period is 1.6 seconds and the amplitude of the um, oscillation is 2.4 centimeters. So how would you calculate omega? Well, omega, uh, the angular frequency, I mean, um, you know what the frequency is, right? It's one upon T. So it's going to be uh, one upon 1.6 Hertz, whatever uh, that works out to be. And what is omega going to be? Well, omega, we know the equation is 2 times pi times f, or 2 times pi divided by t. So if you work all of that out, the angular frequency, remember, it's in radians. It's going to be radians per second. If you don't know why it's in radians, please uh, refer back to the videos on circular motion. Um, and then you have uh, the question, what's the maximum speed that this mass is oscillating at, right? So our v max is at x equals zero, right? So, um, which is equal to omega x naught, which is equal to 3.9 times 2.4, and that gives us um, 9.4 centimeters per second. So let's keep going. We can also try and calculate the acceleration here. So acceleration is going to be negative omega squared x. So now you know um, uh, you know what omega is, and you know uh, what the uh, maximum acceleration is going to be. 
um, in order to make that happen, go back and remember, when does the maximum acceleration happen? Well, uh, maximum acceleration happens when you're when you are at the maximum displacement point. So you have to go with the amplitude there, x naught. So this guy then becomes, if you do the arithmetic on that, this one becomes 37 centimeters per second per second. And what else could we learn from, uh, from this system? Well, one other thing that we can learn from this system is what is, let's say, um, what's the speed of this particle at a certain point? Right? So let's say I want to know speed at, um, at, a, at, a, at a displacement from its equilibrium position of uh, 0.6 centimeters. And um, the way you would follow that, follow through on that is going to be omega x naught squared minus x squared. And then omega is going to be 3.9 uh, times the square root of 2.4 squared minus 0.6 squared. And that works out to be 9.1 centimeters per second. So folks, that uh, brings us to the end of this video. Um, let's take a look in the next video in terms of energy in simple harmonic motion. So we've been talking about, you know, uh, speed and acceleration and uh, displacement. So let's talk a little bit about what happens with energy in simple harmonic motion in the next video. So I'll see you there. Thank you.